What's going on, guys? Frank Nitty here. And I want to talk about the uh, recent events of the Packers losing another NFC title game. I mean, what else is new, right? As Packers fans, we, we've been here so many times now, it's not even funny. And it's pretty upset. It's disappointing. Obviously, it hurts. It's frustrating when you cheer for a team that year in and year out competes for a championship when you have one of the best quarterbacks of this generation but still just cannot make it to that big dance. You, know, you, had, you had a guy in Tom Brady who dominated the AFC for two decades and consistently advanced to the, 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 the Super Bowl more often than not. Come over to the AFC in his first year with the Bucks, who were a long-time robbery of the Packers going way back to the, the, the mid-90s and late 2000s when they were in the NFC Central. So there was still, so there was definitely still some bad blood for the Bucks, you know, especially if you're a Packers, especially if you're a Packers fan. But all in all, regardless of the history of, regardless of what type of history we have with the Buccaneers, at the end of the day, this was just a this was a game that was tough to watch for a lot of reasons. For one, it's the fourth NFC title game loss in the last seven years. And it looked like it was gonna be another one of those games where we were just getting we were just gonna get up get blown out and get our ass kicked like the last two. Like we last year we got completely embarrassed and destroyed by the by the forty niners. Before that we got blown out by Atlanta Falcons. The last time, the last one we competed in was against the Chicken Hawks in 2014. And we, you know, really should have won that game, obviously. But they ended up choking it away in the fourth in the fourth quarter. So now, here we are again in our fourth NFC title game in the last seven, seven years. And this time, we finally get one at home. Something that Aaron Rodgers has always wanted, and we still blow it. Man, it sucks, man. There's, there's so many things that you can say what led to this loss. I mean, there's a lot of things you can say. How bad the defense was in the first half. Aaron Rodgers and the, and the guys turned the ball over, to, you know, and immediately in the second half, not turning those turnovers into points. There's a lot of things and a lot of reasons why we lost this football game. So... I want to just go ahead and apologize to, to anybody who's followed my channel for a while. And I, I just want to say that I'm sorry that I haven't made any videos talking about the Packers all year long. Mainly just because with all the nonsense that was going on going, coming into the 2020 season, I was just totally, I completely zoned out. And I just didn't want to invest time into making videos because I, I knew in the back of my mind that just, it's it's just one of those things where, you know, shout out, shout out, shout, shout outs to Sports Live and ATO. I still follow his channel and I still watch a lot of his videos. But he made a comment one in one of his live streams where being Atlanta's Falcon, being an Atlanta Falcons fan, he talked about how there are just certain things that the Falcons do that he notices all the time that really helps him predict how the game is going to go. And it's the same thing when you're a Packers fan. Hell, it's probably the same thing when you're a fan of any team. Any team that you're a fan of and you watch them on the week, week in and week out throughout the season and you just know there are just certain things that the team does that ends up leading, leading to the end results. And as a Packers fan, I have said time and time again that it doesn't mean a damn thing if the Packers go out here and beat all these teams with losing records and just cupcake opponents if once we actually, but once we actually play really good teams, really teams that are championship ready, who are ready for playoff runs, and we run into those type of football teams, we get our ass kicked. It's the same thing that happens time and time again. Happens all the goddamn time. And I said it. I said it right when I made that one video of my midseason uh Packers video. I said that look man, it didn't matter how it doesn't doesn't matter how many cupcake teams we meet we beat if we can't win these big games against tough opponents. It happened against the Colts. It happened against the Bucks uh, and it happened against the Bucks twice. 
First time we played the Bucks, we we got we got blown out of the water after taking a quick thirteen, a ten to nothing lead, I believe. And then here, the the Bucks had to leave from start to finish. We never we never had to leave once. Now I'll give I'll give I'll give the Packers credit as far as fighting back, and and coming close to coming coming back and winning this football game, but still, ultimately it still wasn't enough. And I'm just and I'm just I'm just tired, man. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm I'm just so sick and tired of being frustrated, hoping that this team will finally get over the hump and and punch their way into the Super Bowl. Like, listen, I will be just perfectly fine. I know, I know, I know. I sound stupid, but I'll be just perfectly fine if all I did was if if at the very least they were able to just get back to the Super Bowl, even if they don't end up winning. Let's say we beat the Chicken Hawks right in 2014 and then lost to the Patriots. Fine, whatever. Let's say we somehow got past the Falcons and, and played the Patriots again, but then won that one. Okay? Let's say we somehow defeated the 49ers, but then lost to the Chiefs. And then this year, let's say we beat the Bucks and then go on to maybe actually beating the Chiefs in a rematch. Yo. Know, Maybe there was maybe we had some type of outcomes like that where we're just making it to the Super Bowl, come out as winners or losers from time to time. But none of those things happen because we can never just get past the NFC title game. We can come out the wild card, we can come out the division round, but for some reason, Aaron Rodgers and those boys just fold when it comes to title games, man. I just don't know why. And you just see all, you see the disappointment and the frustration all over Aaron Rodgers' face. As he sits there on the bench, once again, having to see his dreams of getting back to the Super Bowl disappear. The game ending once again with, with the ball not in his hands. And I feel bad I feel bad for the guy, man. I really feel bad for the guy. You could tell that this was the year he really, truly believed that we would get back to the Super Bowl. You could, you could just tell. Because Aaron Rodgers was playing great football all year long. He's definitely gonna win his third MVP. There's no, there's no question about it. He's definitely gonna win his third MVP award. He was playing out of his mind all season long. Forty-eight touchdowns, five interceptions. There was, there was no quarterback playing better than Aaron Rodgers this season, other than Pat Mahomes. You know, Tom Brady's still, you know, obviously still around, still doing his thing, but he, he didn't outplay, he didn't outplay uh, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, you know, he went out there and even with his offensive line just completely folding and breaking down, no back to he finally hurt them. You saw everything that Aaron Rodgers was trying to do to get us to help to help us win. It just obviously just wasn't enough. Oh boy, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, like I said, having not talked that much about this season, I I just I just knew what was going to happen, man, and it's. And it's one of the reasons why I just didn't want to make any goddamn videos because I'm sick of tired of repeating myself. You know, when playoff football was about to start, the, the, the Green Bay Packers probably were playing their best football. The defense was actually playing good. They were getting turnovers. They were getting stops. The, the offense was executing better. Special teams were still ass, but that's to be expected. But the Packers still fought and earned home field advantage, and that was their best chance, again, to make it back in a long time. They, you know... They beat the defeat the Rams and then get to get, get a rematch against the the Bucks here at home and and just can't do it and it's <laughs> oh boy but let's go let's go ahead and then just go ahead and talk about some of the problems that occurred in this game real fast. One of the biggest problems with the Packers and why they lost this football game is the three is third down defense. You look at the first you look at the first half and one of the Biggest problems that that was occurring was our inability to get off the field. Now, granted, now the thing the thing is, I understand that it's Tom Brady, and he's gonna make plays. And if you don't get pressure on a guy like that, he's gonna he's gonna pick your defense apart. And Tom Brady pretty much made it his business to pick on the weakness in our secondary, especially on third downs. All right, we just we just could not get any key stops, man. Uh, he picked on Chandler Sullivan a couple of times to convert third third downs, and these weren't and these weren't third and shorts, man. These were third and long plays that the Buccaneers were converting, and they were converting easily. 
Right, he was picky, picked on Chandler Sullivan a couple times, and then he threw at Kevin King to, to finish the opening drive for a touchdown, and that can, it couldn't have been more easy. And that was pretty much the story in the first half. This the Packers defense just could not get off the field on third downs. Then another another problem was in uh, was our red zone offense. It's you know I understand that um. That Devontae Adams is our best receiver, so Aaron Rodgers is going to look his way more often than not to, to in order to score points, especially in the red zone for obvious reasons. But trying to get the ball to, to, to Devontae so much is what really led to the down, is really led to missing point and leaving points off the field. Devontae Adams had a rare drop in the first half that should have been a touchdown that we had to settle for a field goal. Then we tried to get the ball to him two more times, and it didn't work out. And on one of those plays, Alan Lazar was wide open, but Aaron Rodgers completely missed him because he was staring down Devontae Adams the whole way. So for three straight for three straight for, so for three straight plays in the goal uh, in, in the red zone, three straight plays in the red zone. The first half, we tried to force the ball to Devontae, and it just didn't work. Rodgers really, they really should have opened the play up. They really should have opened the playbook up more to try to get that ball to some of our other guys. You know, maybe a Robert Tunyon, who's also a nice target in the red zone. You know, or maybe Rodgers again doesn't miss Alan Lazard coming wide open. That we could that's seven points we could have got right there, but we came away with only three. And then you had the interception that Aaron Rodgers threw, which. Again, it's very controversial. One, a defender, yes, the defender made a good play on the ball to intercept the pass, but he was holding Alan Lazar's jersey that didn't get called, which was <laughs> just one of the many calls that the referees did not make this, fo- this football game. Then you had the drop interception, I think, on the Bucks' next drive, I believe, from, from Redmond. He could have picked off Tom Brady, but he didn't. And then, of course, like I said, Tom Brady was picking on our weakness in the secondary, and our biggest weakness was who? Kevin King. I mean, I I I get so fed up talking about how trash this dude is, and what makes it even more frustrating is that you still have a whole back a bunch of Packers fans who will just go out of their way to defend this guy for whatever reason. I do not know. Kevin King is trash. Okay, I don't know how many times I have to keep on saying it. But I hope that this NFC title game will finally open the rest of you Packers fans' eyes and understand that this dude has been garbage all season long. Just absolute garbage. He has continually been the worst part of our secondary. Every every single team we played this season, they got their biggest plays during against him. All you have to do is go back and watch those games, watch the film. Majority of the big plays that were given up were against were, were in Kevin King's coverage. He was literally the biggest problem and, and, and one of the biggest problems of defense in that first half. This dude was absolute shit. He missed time this jump that led to that quick that quick touchdown on the, on the Buccaneers opening drive. He got beat a couple of times on third down conversions, along with Chandler Sullivan, who I already talked about. And then the big one at the end, at the end of the first half. Now this is on Kevin King and Mike Patton. All right, I don't know what the hell was going through Mike Patton's head, but the defensive form, defensive scheme he called was just stupid. You got eight seconds left in the first half. The only thing that you should be, the only thing the Bucks and Bucks should be doing is trying to just get in field goal range and get a field goal. That's generally what most teams will be looking to do in this situation. But instead, they're looking. Tom, Tom Brady's looking at the coverage, and he's like, "Oh shit, let's take a shot down. The, let's just take a shot downfield, since they're only playing one single high safety." And that's what he did. He took a shot downfield. Sure enough, they sure enough, Kevin King gets his ass completely burnt by their wide receiver, and he gets he catches for a touchdown. And instead of going into halftime with maybe just a a a, a, a seventeen to ten lead, just being down by seven, we're now down by eleven points. So again, like I like I said, I really hope now this will this game open the eyes of a lot of Packers fans who think that this guy is good and understand that that he isn't. Kevin King is garbage, man. And I and I hope and I really hope the the goodness that we do not bring him back. Because if we bring him back, it's gonna be the same crap happening next year. We got one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL right now on the other side, Jair Alexander. Jair Alexander had an amazing year, making his first Pro Bowl. 
All right, he might have some games maybe where he's getting beat a couple of times, but other than that, Jair is, is playing on a completely different level than King and all the rest of those guys at cornerback position. I like Adrian Amos. I like uh, Donar Savage. Those guys may not be the best tacklers in the world, but they're actually pretty good, d decent starting safeties for us. But the cornerback position is what we, we, we once again need to address again. Because Kevin King on the opposite side, lining up on the opposite side of Jair is not working out. Because quarterback, because quarterbacks are not throwing at Jair that much. Because he's playing good coverage. But they're picking completely on Kevin King because they know this guy, this guy is trash. Tom Brady was probably literally in that film room laughing, watching that guy in coverage. Just seeing how fucking bad he is. You cannot tell me Tom Brady was not studying the game film and just watching his technique, watching what he does when he's on King coverage, and be like, "Oh man, I'm gonna rip, I'm gonna rip this guy to shreds," and that's exactly what he did. Again, Kevin King is garbage, garbage. <sighs> so we come on the second half, down twenty-one to ten. And what the Packers do on their opening drive, you know, the, the good thing about, you know, getting beat and, and going down 11 points was the good thing was we were going to get the ball back to start the second half. And what happens? Aaron Jones fumbles the ball. Aaron Jones fumbled the ball earlier in the game, which thankfully Robert Tunyon fell on and recovered it. But then here he is, he gets another, he gets another pass to the outside and he fumbles again. In a very similar manner. I mean, you got to give the Buck, the Bucks defender credit for knocking the ball, punching, getting the ball out again. But it's very disappointing. A guy like Aaron Jones, who's been an amazing running back for us since he's been here, who I vouch for to get more carries and get more involved in the game because because how underutilized he was his first couple of seasons here. But it's gonna be really disappointing if that was his final play as a Packer, because it does it definitely doesn't look like the Packers are gonna re-sign him and bring him back. Definitely not. It definitely looks like they're going to let Aaron Jones walk. And I really feel bad for the dude that that's going to be his final play as a Packer. I hope it's not, but I'm pretty sure it is. So I really feel bad for for Aaron Jones because, again, he's been a good running back for us for a long time now. All right, His versatility, and not only in the run game but in the passing game, is not something I want to give up. But it just really sucks that that was that was his final play, and it really killed us. Because then we go from down twenty one to ten to down twenty eight to ten. But the Packers, to their credit, came back and then got two 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 quick scoring drives. You know the, the the next possession we score a touchdown. Then after that we pick off Tom Brady for the second for the first time and turned that into six points. We tried to go for two. But Alan Lazard, Alan Lazard, excuse me, not Alan Lazard, was it Alan Lazard or oh, EQ St. Brown? I think it was EQ St. Brown who dropped the two-point conversion attempt. So then it was 20, 23 to 28, I believe, right? And then, you know, yeah, 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 it was 23 to 28 at that point. And the Packers would not score any more points for the rest of the game, despite picking off Tom Brady two more times. So we pick off Tom Brady two more times, and defense all of a sudden is playing some good fo football in the second half. To give us to give the, uh, the 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 offense opportunities to take the lead, and we couldn't do it. Jair Alexander picked off Tom Brady the next two drives, and what happens? We don't turn those into any points. You have got the score off turnovers, especially in an NFC freaking title game. But we don't we don't we don't turn any of those those two turnovers into points and go three and out each time. So this is what so this is what I mean. There were so many things that played it played against the Packers. So many things that were going wrong that led to us losing this football game. It's like everything that can go wrong just went wrong. After playing good football and, and almost non-mistake football all the way up until this point. Again, you had the the again Devontae Adams dropped. The turnover at the start of the second half, giving up that big play at the end of the first half, getting killed on third downs, and then not getting off the field, not turning those two those those turnovers into more point more than six points, and then at the end and, and and the red zone offense not being able to get not even able to, not even able to score touchdowns. Our final drive, 
we go through, we went three and out, we went three and out again. No, that's not three and out again, but we, you know, first goal, first and goal, second goal, third and goal, we weren't able to punch out, punch the ball into the end zone. And, and, and Matt LaFleur, he was going to get really killed in the media for a while now, could not, you know, they could not have picked a more worse time to, to be, to be like Mike McCarthy and get conservative, conservative and kick the field goal. I understand the defense was playing good in the second half. But it's Tom Brady on the other side of the field, man. All right, and as much and as much as people, as much as my people and even myself, who are tired of Tom Brady at this point, and seeing him in in in, in the Super Bowl, at the end of the day, you cannot give him enough opportunity to get that football in his hands, with a game on the line. You just cannot do it. You can't do it. They should have went for. They should have went for it on fourth and goal. They should have went forward on fourth and goal, and even if you didn't make it, it still would have been a, a one possession game, and 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 it probably would have been an easier way to stop them because they were it would have been they would have been pinned more back in 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 in, in the red zone in the end zone. But you cannot just kick a field goal and then expect the defense to somehow get the Buccaneers to go three and out, which they hadn't done all game. And then on the final and on the final possession, the it looked like we were gonna get a stop and then Kevin King once again, the biggest weakness on that in that secondary gets called for a holding, which led to a first down and the Buccaneers punched their way to the Super Bowl. <sighs> and so so there you have it. So there you have it, man. It was just another disappointing NFC title game. The Packers, like I said, have now lost four out of out of the last seven. Uh, NFC title championships, and, and, and no other team has lost as many in this in this this month this in this span, other than the, the Rams back in the seventies. And and it just sucks, man, because like I said, started this video, being a fan of a team that consistently competes, consistently makes the playoffs, and just cannot get all the way to the Super Bowl and win, it just hurts. It just hurts, man. It just absolutely hurts. Because I want Roger, I really want Aaron to get us another Super Bowl title, man. I really do. 30 years with Brett Favre and, and Aaron Rodgers as our starting quarterbacks in only two Super Bowls. Some people might say, oh, well, at least you got two Super Bowls. You know, people people who are fans of teams who haven't won a Super Bowl at all, they'll be like, well, at least you got two with those guys. Yeah. But we want more. You want your team to win. Everybody wants their team to win. Everyone wants to see their favorite football team, a sports team in general, win a championship. And Packers, who have won more championships than anybody, two, 30 years with Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, should have been multiple Super Bowl titles, not just one apiece. So many missed opportunities with Brett, so many obviously with Aaron. These opportunities are just not easy to come by. But when Aaron Rodgers is our starting quarterback, We've been in these positions so many times because the guy has been carrying the weight on his shoulders for so long. Year in and year out, Aaron Rodgers finds a way to get us, get us into the playoffs and compete for titles almost every single season. Even with even with even with questionable defense, the defense is uh, on another side, shitty ass freaking special teams. Okay, that dumb thing went away, but yeah, shitty ass special teams. The guys, the guys are stud, man. All right, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers literally doesn't have nothing to prove to anybody. He's one of the most skilled and talented quarterbacks of all time. And that's just my opinion. The only thing that Aaron Rodgers has going against him is not getting is not is not enough team accomplishments like a Super Bowl. Winning the Super Bowl at the end of the day is the ultimate team accomplishment. It's not a individual award. But when we're ranking, but when we're ranking quarterbacks, unfortunately, Super Bowl titles are going to come into play. He has one, but he's just going to go down very similar to Drew Brees, where yeah, you had that one Super Bowl title, but you were unable to win multiple. You know, and and it's and it's sure you still have great quarterbacks like Dan Marino, who number one, who number one any. Who, who who never won a Super Bowl title? But then you got Tom Brady on the other side, who's won six. And despite the fact that again that it's it's a team accomplishment, quarterbacks like Tom Brady are going to be ranked 
at the top because of because of his teams being much more better built in and 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 on especially especially on the offense and defensive side of the ball to win championships and because of those championships is why he's just going to be in a class of his own like do I think Tom Brady is just so much better than guys like Peyton Manning, Joe Montano, Dan Marino, Aaron Rodgers even? No. I don't. I think Tom Brady's just had the luxury of just being on great football teams. He's a great quarterback himself. I'm not trying to downplay him in any type of way. But he's also just had the real opportunity to just be on better, better football teams that cater to him and, and give him everything that he needs to win a Super Bowl. I mean, his first year in Tampa, and here he is in, in another Super Bowl time, another Super Bowl, so... <laughs> It, it it is what it is, man. Um, there's really nothing you can do about it. Um, but like I said, when you're ranking great quarterbacks, you can't argue anybody being above Tom because of, because of those Super Bowl titles. So it it is what it is, man. <sighs> I just know that when Aaron Rodgers' career is over, nobody should look. Nobody should be ranking him no lower than than top fifteen, in my opinion. Because without Aaron Rodgers, there's no way in hell the Packers get anywhere close to any 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 of these, any of these NFC title games. Not even close. Like I said, he had a great year, probably his best year since 2011. On his way to winning his third MVP award, and he completely deserves it. Because he's had to play for a team for so long that's done almost absolutely nothing. That hasn't done enough. Now, I'm not going to say nothing, but just hasn't done enough to give him everything he needs to get his back to the Super Bowl. Still need answers on that, that on that defensive side of the ball. Still got wide receivers that, other than Devontae Adams, who are just hit and miss sometimes so many so much. But I don't want I don't want to crap on that because I'll give I'll you know what I'll give Mark Perez Vada Scantley a lot of credit. He came to play. He made every catch that came his way. He came to play. So I'm not going to crap on Marquez. He came to play. I mean, the dude, the dude was had such an up and down year with drops. But I'll give him all the credit in the world that he came to play. And he's definitely not the reason why we lost. Not even close. So if he can just continue this momentum, then I could trust him coming back to being a, a, a number two or three next to Devontae next year. But I still feel like the offense will be even more better and threatening if we could just get a an, an really true, another uh, reliable guy next to Devontae Adams. As far as the running attack, like I said, Aaron Jones is most likely not going to be brought back next year. So if they're going to move on with Jamal Williams and, and A.J. Dillon as our running back tandem next year, I'm not sure how I feel about that because... Jamal Williams is not the type of guy who's going to go out there and 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 run for a ton of yards. And AJ Dillon, I'm not sure, and I'm not sure what to make out of him other than yeah, he's a big, strong, tough runner. But how effective he's going to be outside of that, just running the ball at the scene, I don't know. So it's kind of so it's kind of why I just kind of cross my fingers and hope they bring Jones back, but they most likely won't. So, uh, Robert Tunyon. He he definitely had a breakout year. Should have been voted to the Pro Bowl, but I'm fine with him coming back as our tight end. Our offensive line, hopefully Dave Bakhtiari, uh, his knee will be healed in time for next season. Corey Lindsley, I hope they re-sign him. The rest of the guys, I think they're all right. You know, there's nothing. Like, it's the offensive line, other than going against the Bucks, actually had a pretty damn good year. I thought they were protecting Aaron Rodgers pretty well. Up until those two Bucks games, so I don't think there really needs to be that much changes to the offensive line. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, Kenny Clark is all right. He had a good game as well, so I, you know you can keep Kenny Clark, but they really just need to find some other guys that can better rush the quarterback. Preston Smith did not have a good season overall, and I don't really care if he comes back. Zadarius Smith, I, I, I would like to see him again, you know. 
Rashawn Gary definitely stepped it up and played much better than he did in his rookie season. Um, again, the guys, you know, the guys, I was starting to say these Amos and Savage, I'm fine with those guys. <laughs> sure, they might get beat and they might miss some tackles, but I'm fine with those guys still remaining on starting safeties. But the the biggest problem, obviously, again, is cornerback. And I'm sick and tired of just constantly trying to find, trying to, just looking at the Packers once again, trying to figure out answers at that position. We 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 drafted and invested so much in trying to fix that secondary and 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 get better guys at the cornerback position, and we just cannot do it, man. Jair Alexander is is a Pro Bowl cornerback. He's fine. He's not going anywhere. Hopefully not. Hopefully they resign him once his contract is up. His rookie contract is up. But um, the rest of those guys, Chandler Sullivan, Josh Jackson, Kevin King, they suck. All those guys are just trash. Absolute trash, man. And if Jair is your only good cornerback, then most teams are going to have no problem throwing on your secondary win. All they have to do is just not throw it on one side, throw throw to one guy's coverage, but can throw against two to three other guys' coverage and just get a ton of yards and big plays out of it. Which is one of the actual good things about this season is the Packers defense did not give up too many big plays this season compared to last year, but still wasn't enough. It still wasn't enough, and it will be enough. And it seems like that's just going to always be the story with the Packers, just miss opportunities, not executing, not winning these games that we should win. Because if all these things that I mentioned didn't go wrong, the Packers can most likely be heading to Tampa, getting ready to face the Chiefs. And <laughs> I know if you're not, I know if you're not, if you're not a Packers fan, you're loving it, and you're you're love you're, you're loving it, and you love the fact that we lost yet another title game. But you know, as a as a fan of this team, love this team to the end of, until until the day I die, I will always root for the Packers. Obviously. I will never cheer against them. Um, I love my love my favorite football team. Well, I will always root for them to win, to get to 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 get back to the Super Bowl and win another championship. I'll always do. You know that's that will never freaking change. That that will never change. So even though we we made so we made it to the NFC title game so many times and have lost all of them, I would rather still see my team lose. This deep in the playoffs, than root for a franchise that has failed to win in in decades, and and and, and be in any type of playoff position. I mean, look at the Buffalo Bills. I mean, look how they their franchise finally turned it around, and how far they got to the AFC title game. And I think if the Bills continue on the way they they were playing this year, they're going to be competing in that AFC for a long time. You know, you got a lot of teams who you know were young quarterbacks. You know that that they're gonna be competing and 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 going for and going in deep playoff runs, which is one of the reasons why it really hurts to see Rodgers blow yet another another opportunity to get back to Super Bowl because you got a lot of young boys now coming into the league who are hungry, who are hungry, who want to win title championships themselves. Patrick Mahomes right now is on fire, and he's and he's still very young, obviously. You got, you know, you got the Sean Watson who wants out of Texas so that he doesn't waste his prime there anymore and, and wants to go somewhere where he can compete for a title. You know, you got that young Jalen Hurts in for the Eagles. You got Kyle Murray, the, Car- the Cardinals, Josh Allen for the Bills. You know, it, that, that Lamar Jackson, like you got so many young up and coming quarterbacks who all want to compete and win championship and titles. So. Unfortunately for them, they gotta sit there. They gotta sit at home at their couches and watch old man Tom Brady compete for yet another Super Bowl, and Aaron Rodgers, who's not young himself, has to be on that couch with them. So it is what it is, man. I mean, at the end of the day, I was, I was, I was expecting the best, but I, excuse me, I was hoping for the best, but I was expecting the worst. Them losing this title game didn't shock me, and it would have surprised me if they actually won. And I wanted them to win, obviously, but it just wasn't meant to be yet again. And that's just all it comes down to, man. 
So I hope you guys enjoy this. I know I was talking for a long time, and it's you know it's mainly just because I haven't talked about the Packers pretty much at all this season. I apologize for that, but if you did watch this video, if you caught bits and chunks of it, I really appreciate it. Just on to next season. Go Packers.